All right, all right. Hello, everyone. Good job, Evelyn. All right, hello, everyone, and welcome now to a game between Infi versus WFZ. This game taking place here on Concealed Hill. Over here on the bottom left hand side of the map, Concealed Hill. Actually, I'm 99% sure that this is Concealed Hill. Yep, yeah, sometimes I get my names, skills, and all of those things all mixed up. Um, yeah, I, apparently I called the Naga Sea, which is ultimate ability, a uh, monsoon or typhoon when it is tornado. And I, I don't know, I, I, I think for lore reasons, I would say that, mo that a Naga Sea, which has seen more monsoons and typhoons than actual tornadoes, um, don't, don't know how many torna tornadoes or I don't know, does Kansas have a lot of sea witches? down in tornado alley not quite sure anyways let's go ahead and break things down in this one particular 1v1 matchup infi has spawned as the random human player over here on the top right hand side of the map he is wearing the blue trunks opening up with a very standard wall in procedure two entrances in and out perhaps may place an additional farm either here or here to well, make it difficult to sneak in and out it is going to be an archmage coming through and there is that footman now as we're looking at an acolyte now making its way out from wfz WFZ off on the other side of the map. Death Knight now being trained up. It is going to go straight into a graveyard. Tomb of Relics. Ghouls all in position. All here things ready to go. As well, things are um, getting well underway. We'll see how everything will be going down in these matchups here. As the Death Knight is going to be well making its way out here in just a moment. And we'll see if he tries for the harassment or if he perhaps makes a play out um, to do a little bit of creeping. Death Knight only picking up a rod of necromancy. That is it as the units now make their way off to the north. Archmage off down over here. Going to go ahead and militia creep out this ogre warrior creep camp. Claws of attack plus six. Actually a very powerful and useful item early on in the game as all of a sudden the Archmage is really doing 25% more damage. Normally you wouldn't think very much of that damage but then all of a sudden now it is something you have to worry about as the footman now tries to back away a little bit more damage getting eaten through right there. Forest Troll Berserk are going to finish off one skeletal minion as the footman tries to run back this Ogre Warrior. Well causing a little bit of traffic and delay as the footman now looks to back up again. Skeletal, well, what is this? Oh, Acolyte's now going to end up getting taken down. There goes Archmage, going to drop a Water Elemental Militia, are pretty much going to run by these giant sea turtles and take a little bit more damage than you would really like to, but the fast expansion is already underway. A little bit of purge onto that footman right there. They're going to take a look there, I believe, was another purge. And now a lot of Knoll Assassin poison spreading around as you can take a look. All of these peasants actually taking a large or a, a small amount of damage. But that does open things up for this Death Knight later on to do a bit more harassment. All right, WFZ not in a good spot at all being forced to use a third rod of necromancy charge just to clear out this green creep camp that is relatively close to home. Not, uh, not the best spot for him as that does get taken down. Archmage now finding a, well, a corner creep camp as well. Going to finish it off. Archmage is going to be very close to level 3 after all of this. But what may be more important right now is this pendant of energy. Um, which will give him, well, 169 mana already at level 3 with level 2 water elementals and an upper threshold of 540 mana. Infi may try to come back and use this little bit of an advantage to make something happen. Meanwhile, let's take a look back across here. Archmage picks up a staff of teleportation. Where is it going to go as the units are now going to be running on inside here? Skeletal minions have an easy, easy time. We're going to see a quick death coil peasant unable to jump inside that gold mine as the units are going to be fighting around every which way some early damage coming across here militia going to try to join in on the fight militia now also pushing their way through death knight going to get off another death coil finishing off that peasant again 
we already have this expansion up and operational the arcane tower well now that scout tower getting added in here as the units are making their way back yeah, i never even noticed the net ease the portrait on the skeletons um, that is chinese censorship if anyone uh, plays magic you would know that well at the picture of any sort of animating bones or skeleton bones is, is just a quote unquote not a, um, acceptable or suitable for this the younger market so that's the reason why you see that that has been changed there the skeletal minion actually looks um a little silly to be honest as the archmage now well is able to push back those units once more death knight sitting at level two rod of necromancy charges still here ready to go we are looking at a big economic advantage for infi footman with defend off ready to be used as well as more and more footmen are being trained now the question is going to be what is the follow-up play archmage going to perhaps try to back around over here knowing that the death knight wants to hit two places at once two skeletal minions are here and they're going to end up getting taken down very quickly meanwhile the archmage is here militia being called over there goes some more damage as well as double water elementals is enough to push back these units once more However, with the Lich, the, well, the tide of battle will switch. Being able to pick off those low, low hit point um, units because they are slowed it does end up adding to be quite a bit of damage as the Death Knight and the Lich once again shift off to the north. Coming back around, Lich going to go ahead. There's that Frost Nova and that easy first kill right there. Both units getting 20 experience. Footman, you're now going to go ahead and dive on in. Archmage doesn't have enough mana just quite yet. As we're going to see, well, the Nerubi, or no, the Halls of the Dead causing quite a bit of damage and slowing things up as the ghouls are going to be making their way over. Archmage will have a difficult time trying to get back out as we're already looking at Obsidian statues joining out onto the field here at that well at the seven minute mark one low hit point ghoul gonna try and get away or one low hit point unit gonna try and get away archmage gonna go ahead and teleport to the backside here and now you can see the archmage is really just disrupting a lot of mining as two spirit towers may get operational back on the other side here you can take a look at this so many skeletal minions so many militia trying to fight back and this is going to end up becoming a problem as if there is still Rod of Necromancy charges available. Death Knight slowly getting a little bit of experience. And time after time, footmen are starting to get taken down. But it is one base to one base. Two spirit towers are fighting back here as well. And eventually the damage is going to start to be far too much as footmen are going to end up getting taken out too. There they go. They're going to try and engage. Are more units going to be trained up here? No, we still don't see that as the Archmage drops another water elemental to try to stick around longer death knight militia crypt fiend's gonna be battling it out and this is just a battle to see who can stay around longer archmage teleports back and um, not to the home but to the expansion using a clarity potion and a scroll of regeneration back down here wfz is mining away they're taking a look footmen peasants all of these units are trying to fight a little bit more unit after unit is starting to take far too much damage death knight is going to be able to get off a death coil to finish off this footman that is a big question now as the one obsidian statue is the lone difference here all right a little bit more damage coming across here death knight may need to get a death coil off onto that crypt fiend who is now dangerously low on hit points as the units are now making their way through footman tries to block the path not going to work though as the well, obsidian statue is going to try to keep this crypt fiend alive lich while on the other hand still inside going to have a very difficult time as the lich was left behind death knight what is he going to try and do here are we going to see a death coil yes death coil onto the lich scroll of town portal obsidian statue trying to double back around trying to stay away archmage unable to finish off that obsidian statue as the obsidian statue stays alive at 26 hit points all right big big regeneration right there this acolyte wants to just repair this obsidian statue the obsidian statue says no i must be called to battle and will provide a little bit of support here lich is right here obsidian statue should be doubling back around acolyte should be getting the repairs here and i like this play by wfz he is purposely just sitting back. He is, well, creeping, using his time wise, wisely while getting this obsidian statue trained up or repaired back up to full. Footman looking to see what is going on around the rest of the map. Death Knight is at three. Lich is at two, almost three. Going up against an Archmage who is already at four. 
And well, we are still not yet at tier two by Infi. Infi does have the economic advantage. He wants this game to go long as gold advantage doesn't necessarily translate until later on throughout the match. And he still has a lot of ground to make up in terms of tech. Speaking of tech, tech to tier three already halfway done as the slaughterhouse, well, Slaughterhouse is still cranking out what well, was cranking out those units. Acolyte being pulled back here. Double Obsidian Statue. Low hit point footman down to 206 hit points. One more shot. Death Quail could easily finish it off right there. A little bit more damage. Obsidian Statues could even join in on the fight. One more shot. There it goes. Getting taken down as we do have a keep here at the natural expansion. This is going to allow for call to arms. This is something that you don't normally see any longer since there was a major patch change as the Lich well, gets a big frost. Nova off and trying to take down some of those peasants footmen well without the fen what is it doing it is gonna well die very quickly finally it has the fen up but the units are gonna get taken out there as lich may try to get off another frost nova on multiple units again infi no slack slacker gonna go ahead and switch things up and say you know what i'm just gonna try and blow this place down with a breath of fire and a blizzard combination of fire and ice to really, really, um, well, prevent or cause a lot of damage and cause problems galore. Death Knight teleporting back down. Archmage is still right there. Uh, Brilliance Aura is tr well, trying its best to keep that Archmage all topped off, but it may not be enough as the Panda still trying to fight its way through. Archmage uses a potion of lesser invulnerability. Is it going to be able to take down the Black Citadel? Black Citadel could get taken down, and that is going to stop any, so any sort of, well, destroyer play. Panda still has a good amount of mana. Archmage is still right there. Are we going to perhaps see Breath of Fire come across here? No scroll of Town Portal. There is a blizzard raining down across all of those units. And, well, Spirit Towers are getting destroyed as well. Archmage trying to teleport out. Does not get out, though, as the Death Coil lands and finishes off the Archmage. Meanwhile, off to the north, the Lich was taken down by the Mass Militia as this is upgraded to a keep. Now, let's take a look at this. There are how many acolytes here? Acolytes are trying to mine away. Is this guy repairing? Yes, it is repairing the haunted gold mine, trying to get ziggurats back up. But you, as you can see, well, it is going to be quite some time before it can train up any additional units. Footmen going, or Death Knight, trying to go after these footmen here, trying to add up a little bit more damage. Panda is trying to retreat with them. What is going on here is the Panda is just running around in circles. There is a low hit point footman in the front. Crypt Fiends and Obsidian Statues are going to make their way back over, and the Death Knight needs to lead the charge without the, well, without the, um, um, company of other units here. All right, let's take a look. Low hit point footman is going to get taken down, down to 37 hit points. One more shot should finish, or well, come on, one more shot should finish it off. There it goes, finally. I would have thought Crypt Fiends would have dealt enough damage, but now we're going to see the Crypt Fiends just off to the side here, parked at the expansion, getting a bit of an advantage once more. All right, are we going to start aggroing those creeps? Those are some unit skeletal minions joining in on the fight. Units are now trying to back away as the Black Citadel is still gone. Two Obsidian Statues chasing that Death Knight as unit or damage after damage is going through. Destroyer could be in serious trouble trying to get away, or sorry, Obsidian Statue trying to get away as the Obsidian Statue does get a little bit of hit point regeneration from that unholy aura, but that may not be enough as you're going to see this Obsidian Statue now taken down. Footmen also lost right there. The Panda and the Footmen chased quite a bit of distance as the Crypt Fiends may be able to finish off, well, that Sorceress before before that sorceress gets deep inside cover. Crypt Fiends are still right here. Footman is here. The problem is without the Lich trying to deal damage to these Footmen significantly, significantly less as we're seeing a round of attacks going after the Guard Towers now. All right, there goes that Guard Tower finally down. Burrow to, for the save. Death Coil going to go ahead and pop back up. Archmage teleports back into the fight. So far, Blizzard trying to rain on through. Going to pretty much miss... Um, the majority of the units as the Crypt Fiends are going to continue to try and put down that pressure. Death Knight, low on mana, should be able to get up back up to 75. Nope, takes a little bit of Spellbreaker feedback attack again.
Death Knight looking to back one more Death Coil. Oh, beautiful save on the Footman right there. But no, it still ends up getting taken out again. Death Knight continuing the fight around. Death Knight does have... Nope, that's not the Death Knight. Death Knight does have the Scroll of Town Portal. As the units are back here, we are at Necropolis. And we are waiting to see yep, that Lich to rejoin in. Is WFZ going to really turn things around after losing his Tier 3 main town hall and his hero? Will he be able to get that Lich back into play and make a bit of a play once more? Death Knight, oh, could be in trouble. Is it going to end up getting surrounded? Staff of Teleportation, is it going to be able to get away? There it is, teleporting back out. Blizzard raining down, Breath of Fire catching the tail end of those units as the Death Knight, well... Still tries to heal back up again. Lich going to rejoin in on the fight. More Crypt Fiends. We are looking at... Well, 41 supply compared to 44. Infi has the larger army by far. But as you can also tell, because of the extra peasants here, his overall army is actually um, significant or slightly smaller at this point. And the additional economy is just turning into starting to be an experience advantage for the Death Knight as the Death Knight almost gets to level 5. Spellbreakers are going to try and go after that footman right there. We're going to see level 5 onto the Death Knight. There you go as it tries to dance away once more. All right, more damage being added through. We could see a Death Coil to try and save. Crypt Fiends are going to go ahead and burrow and, well, live to fight another day, so to speak as the frost armor really protecting some of those units. All right, trying to go back another way. There's another death coil denying that workshop. That workshop just needs another little uh, tap from a hammer, and it would be finished down to 194, well, uh, back up to 1197 at his, as it is ready to go. 50 supply compared to 49 here. Crypt Fiends, Obsidian Statues, still no te well, tech to tier 2, now getting underway. Obsidian Statues still getting added in, but no destroyers for that all-important dispel magic. But then again, at this point, maybe you want Abominations instead. The Spellbreaker army, quite effective against these Crypt Fiends. Crypt Fiend's now looking to back up again. There's a big Frost Nova to try and destroy that back line. Death Coil onto a Crypt Fiend saves. Staff of Sanctuary saves as well as the Crypt Fiend. Gonna try and head back. Gonna go ahead and play Whack-A-Mole. Gonna burrow, stick its head in the sand. And well, if it's good as a corporate policy, it must be good as an undead policy. Crypt Fiend now looking to back away again here as they're gonna go ahead and attack back once more. Obsidian Statues still providing plenty of mana. And um, for the heroes and hit points across the undead army, 50 supply compared to 50 supply as the Archmage now comes in with Blizzard, followed by Breath of Fire. Fire and ice causing major problems, major damage across all those units. The Obsidian Statues need to do a lot of healing to keep those units alive and well. And the Archmage just seems to be doing so well right That raining down all of that damage right there. Burrow on those Crypt Fiends. Those Crypt Fiends are going to regenerate some hit points. Obsidian Statues are here again. 50 supply compared to 50. Death Knight going to be forced to back up. These Obsidian Statues are just simply too far back as the Paladins are going to go ahead and engage. All right. Going to go ahead and we will retreat back once more. Death Knight now down to 247 hit points. Nine supply worth of Crypt Fiends. Well, in a horrible spot. Death Knight, forced to use a scroll of Town Portal, says, you know what, everyone to me, get in the chopper. As, well, there you have it. All the Crypt Fiends are saved. I'm having fun with this cast. Thank you very much. All right. Death Knight sitting at level five. Obsidian statues are here ready to go. Lich sitting at level 3 going up against a level 4 Archmage who now has, well, Bloodlust because why not? Uh, Panda sitting at level 2 and a level 1 Paladin. Meanwhile, we're looking at the Lich trying to gain a little bit more experience. Should be just shy of level 4 um, as the Acolytes are also getting some big repairs off on to these um, well, obsidian statues who really need to be ready for that next fight here. Where is that Death Knight going? Death Knight retreats back, picks up a potion of mana. The unholy aura coupled with blight, very fast regeneration right there. Hoping to um, well, be ready for that all-important next battle. Obsidian statue. Well, let's, let's take a look. Yep, just shy of level 4. But now with a wand of mana stealing, could cause problems. Panda now sits at level 3, Vampiric Aura on the Paladin as, 
What is this? WFZ, if it's able to clear out this Overlord creep camp, could take a commanding lead in the experience. There it goes, picking up a Brilliance Aura on the Death Knight. If that's the last thing you want to see, the Death Knight getting Brilliance Aura, providing extra mana not only to the heroes, but to these Obsidian statues who often run out of mana since they are so mana intensive. Tome of Agility plus two being dropped behind, finally jumping into low upkeep as the Lich ready to clear things up here. Dark Ranger also being picked up as well. Are we going to see Tome of Agility plus two picked up by the Dark Ranger? Yes, we are. That is the primary attribute increasing that damage again. Paladin may get to level three, but more importantly, with a belt of giant strength, an additional 150 hit points plus more passive regeneration, he will be just that much more difficult to well finish off. Here we are going into the next fight here. Upgrades, 2-0 upgrades, going up against 1-1 one, one upgrades. No upgrade advantage, not really a, any, any other advantage right now as the Obsidian statues are still in the back, causing lots of problems. That's a lot of guard towers here. But these guard towers, even with level 3 masonry upgrade, are not able to do very much. Also, destroyer form doesn't seem to be upgraded at all. There goes that um, arcane vault, and there's the engagement now. As we are looking at the obsidian statues, oh, it's completely separated from the rest of the army. All right, a big blizzard right there. Silence cast across multiple units. Death Knight now needs to come back away again. Lich could try and... Focus down some of those heroes. Are we going to see the death of a Crypt Fiend? And yes, it is. Breath of Fire blows him down. Death Coil, as we are looking at the Death Knight, still staying at 100, or the Knight staying at 139 hit points, staying alive. Obsidian statues are right there. More damage coming back through. Crypt Fiend has to dodge a little bit once more. Holy Light to try and save that Knight there, making sure that it doesn't take too much. That Blizzard has been the main MVP throughout this match and with a couple of well-timed blizzards on this tightly grouped the pack of units that may be enough another brilliant death coil but the obsidian statues are just working too hard to try and keep these crypt fiends alive death knight finally gets taken down and wfz who played a valiant game ends up leaving the match as that is the gg Overall unit score in fee really taking that last um, that last battle and the the game here getting that panda breath of fire coupled with that blizzard that blizzard and, and panda breath of fire was far too much damage for those obsidian statues to try and heal in, in mass and you saw that just that battle of attrition finally take its toll wfz had a number of good exchanges but it also looked like infi was stockpiling gold while staying in no upkeep and then able to explode into what well, the 75 supply range at the end thanks for watching thanks for listening Hope you guys enjoyed it.